and uh, we're here at the Linaro Connect, and this is the world's first ARM developer box. No, that the, was third. the first, it was third. The third, <laughs> or maybe the fourth. I heard. I heard the fourth as well. Yes. Somebody said that it was a Seattle base. Somebody, right? no, no, not the Seattle, but there was a, a, a PC after the RISC PC. Yes. So, uh, so who are you? Uh, I'm Daniel Thompson. Uh, I work at Linaro in the support and solutions engineering team. <coughs> Uh, and it's been my privilege to, to be playing around with the developer box. So I've had one of these on my desk for, well, I've had it for six months. I've been using it <coughs> as my day to day computer for the last four months. This has been your main desktop. Uh, yeah, machine unless I'm in a coffee home. shop, I've done every bit of work I do for Lenaro on this board for the last, on this person's board. Yeah, at home. Obviously, it doesn't, work, it doesn't work well in a coffee shop. So. It's not yet the last laptop. No. But it could, there could be, so you're waiting it, for it would a laptop. It's quite soon, a right? pokey laptop, yeah, yeah. Let's get a laptop soon. You want a laptop that's arm powered? I would love a laptop that's arm powered. Um, I mean, I like this one a lot because it can take a lot of RAM. So I run mine with 8 gigs, but you can put up to 64 gigs of RAM into this box. And uh, for me, I, I don't want a device with less than 8 gigs regularly. Why? What do you need with 8 gigs? What um, do you do with 8 gigs? I find that you see swapping. If you run 4 gigs and you have Chromium open, and I, I also run other applications. Chromium on its own will survive, but you open the next application and you tend to see swapping. Swapping, that means it goes into the main memory instead yes, of the RAM? Yes, it's, it's the process where when you start to run out of memory, it puts memory on the disk instead. And even with modern, fast SSDs, uh, the delays of getting stuff on the SSD and back again are enough to, to make it feel Feel lumpy, and I don't want to work on something that feels lumpy. So you say you're in the uh, what support group? Uh, uh, support and solutions engineering. So what does that do? Uh, we look at a whole bunch of things. We uh, the short version is we help members exploit their membership of Lunaro. So um, the core engineering teams will enable pieces of hardware occasionally, um, but they want to enable technology, and uh, our members want to sell chips. What's well, the club and core members want to sell chips? Um, and so you need to help bridge the, the technology and help help the members exploit the technology that now is created. So how awesome to have an ARM developer box compared to have an Intel thing? Yes. I mean, how yes. does that change? Uh, surprisingly little. Like I said, I've, I've run it for four months and you don't get up in the morning and think, oh, I wish I had this, this program or this program. This thing has, well, I say everything, but a few tiny, you know, two tiny problems, almost everything has just worked. Uh, and it's always been, you know, quite obscure developer-centric tools that haven't quite been made to work yet. What's the most important thing you do? Usually you open a, a terminal and you start typing stuff, or what do you uh, do? I, I have some managerial responsibility, so the most important program I open is a mail reader. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually true for, for jobbing engineers as well. I mean, engineering is, is now a social discipline. So um, open source is a social process. But so for every developer, I think mail is probably the most important tool. But uh, email um, is maybe not very multi-threaded, right? You need a single thread performance to run an email program? Um, it depends which programs you run, of course. Uh, yes, so the one I liked, or the one I was using before I went to this was Thunderbird, and that didn't feel very snappy. So, um, That's I've, a single threaded app? Or? I don't know how, how threaded it is, yeah. but it certainly wasn't very snappy. Um, and so that's the only change I made to my set of applications. All my other applications that I've used, you know, Chromium, things like that, they've all come across fine, but Thunderbird just didn't work for me. So and which, I, switched, which, I switched to MUT, which I used years ago. And, uh, <laughs> is that a good one? It's a, you can do anything it's a, you I don't know if it'll be installed on this device, yeah. but it, it's, a, it's a, a terminal one. Terminal-based um, email? Yes, security people are very fond of it, because it, it's harder to attack. It's got a smaller attack surface than a GUI browser. Well, uh, so we're in a terminal right now, are we? Yeah, yeah. So I should imagine it's not installed, cool though. Stuff? Uh, well, it, it is merely a terminal. It, it will do the same thing as every other terminal on every other Linux machine, and that's the point. We want yeah. it to be like using any other device. We don't want surprises when you look at the terminal. So what would um, you do, for example? The nice things you can see is HTOP. So HTOP <laughs> has this nice representation of the number of processes running. So and you can see here sitting up, it's, it's, um, they're not really doing a great job. I hope opening Chromium is usually a good way to get six or eight of the cores running. Um, have we got Chromium Internet? Oh, we haven't, no. Okay. This hasn't got Chromium So you need to do an app get or something? Yes. Now, if that works, that'd be rather... The right. internet's pretty fast here. It's nice in Hong Kong, right? Uh, how's it in your home? It's not making it through, so it's not we, going we've through. not got it plugged into the net. Okay, but how, how's your internet at home? <laughs> how's my internet at home? Uh, yeah. It's modern Excellent. broadband. I live in a city, so I get good broadband. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you can do anything you want to get stuff downloaded? Um, so we, we had some images. cool tricks on it. So we got Minecraft running on one of these, because um, it's written in Java. 
And because it's written in Java, we, we had to change a couple of shared libraries, but it just ran Minecraft and it, it worked. It was uh, fine. Is, is, My son was very happy. Is the stuff about using an ARM developer box the most important that you can compile on a native architecture? Yeah, so the, the, the very best thing for me is when I need to spin up a, a virtual machine to test something on, um, I just type QMU and then I say use the kernel that's in slash boot slash VM Linux. So I don't even have to remember where I left a kernel because the kernel that booted the box is also the same kernel that runs the virtual machine. And that just makes it, it just reduces the amount of remembering things you have to do to, to start a QMU session. But is it also better for uh, like testing arm on arm? Yeah, I mean, that's very much it. So, so by spinning up that virtual machine, that is all about testing arm on arm. Uh, it's allowing me to, to make kernel changes and spin up a kernel and see what happens, see if it works. Um, I also did a bunch of stuff with containers, similarly, being able to create native arm containers to test you know, if you've done it right, if you've generated your router vest correctly, all these types of things I can now do without having to spin up a developer, bo uh, the developer board, a small single board computer, I can do it all on the one platform, if you, so if, much more easily. If you were doing that on an Intel, would there be some, some issues like uh, you wouldn't, that you wouldn't notice because it's not native? Um, well, the first thing is, is, even with the relatively slow single thread performance of this device, uh, it's still far better at being an ARM than a PC is, right? So if you get the PC to pretend to be an ARM, it will never be as fast and you will never expose the um, memory ordering. So, so PCs are um, perhaps over aggressive in the memory ordering. They've got really strong constraints on how the, the multiple processors can interleave when they work in memory. And ARM has what, what's called a much more relaxed model. Um, and that relaxed model has benefits uh, and it also has some testing needs. So for all the, in theory, all the Linaro engineers, all people working on ARM software, in, in, it would be better to use an ARM device to develop ARM. I'm not going to preach to other people they should do, but yeah, for me, it's, it's a great way to do ARM development, yeah. And the only thing that might be missing is just single thread, right, on this one? So, so this device is a kind of performance per watt design. So it's designed to offer a quite incredible performance per watt, and, and when this machine is redlined, it only uses about five watts more than it does when it's idle, because the CPU only ever draws five watts. Um, so. Yeah, for sure. So it's a performance per, per watt machine. It's very wide, and when you can exploit that width, everything's fine. But when you can't get all of those CPUs lit up, then you do sometimes see, see slowdowns for particular single-threaded activity. And here they're doing a, a demo. Uh, let's, let's just check this one out first. This is the, the box that people get when they order it? Yes. So there's like the, the desktop here, and what is in here? Oh, so it comes as a kit. Yeah. So the kit contains the motherboard and... Uh, graphics card and memory and a disk um, and then you assemble that yourself into a case and uh, there's a really nice uh, assembly guide for people to follow. Anyone very easy. can order? Anyone can order, anyone needs to own a screwdriver. And the price is good? <laughs> Uh, the price, uh, I'm not quite sure at the moment, I have to admit. The price is uh, like, is it $1,000 or? 1250 for the whole, uh, like this? For the kit, yeah. Shipped all over the world. Yeah. All of the world. Um, so it has CE, uh, F FCC and all that, I guess. Uh, so it just comes smoothly through the... And uh, this, this is an AI demo right here. Oh, Can we check it out? This is an example of what happens um, when you have multiple PCI slots. So this device has a, a lot of PCI capability. Um, so it has a graphics card in it. It also has... Uh, you're perhaps talking to one, one person to some extent, but it has a really powerful AI accelerator that made a big splash at CES. What, what AI um, accelerator neural, is that? I, I don't know. If it's written on the wall. It's a neural processor, so it's there to help um, do all the matrix multiplications. And so stuff that's you need on to, the SOC, uh, the AI accelerator? It, no, no, it's attached to the uh, PCIe. Ah, ah it's on no. PCIe. Yeah. Great. So it's simply an example of what happens when you have PCIe slots and lots of them. So um, actually, if you need some more single threaded, could you add that on PCIe somehow? Could you add another sing, uh, a big, In big principle, yes, but somebody would have to make such a board. Okay. <laughs> uh, and you might have some challenges with the memory uh, bandwidth. Not memory bandwidth, the, the making sure they can access memory efficiently. Um, so this is going to launch up a um, pattern recognizer, um, which is a trained neural network to try and classify images. 
Um, so these is now playing videos, and it's able to recognise each of these images and classify it for what, what's contained in the image um, at an impressive speed and an even more impressive power cost. So that was reading 32, and 32 is kind of the overhead of power supply and refreshing the RAM and, and all the other things you have on your board. Uh, and on a, a PC, a conventional PC, which which you do that if you start to use those cores that the PC has, uh, you'll see the power level triple quite often. Um, whereas this has gone up by three watts. Three watts to do all this stuff. Yeah. So it's like a 22.4. Um, teraflops, I believe. No, not yeah. flops. Tera operations. They're not flops. Tera operations per second. Powerful CNN, is that to do with TV channel or no? Something uh, it's else? It's a type of neural network. Okay. So I can't remember what the C stands for, but the N and the N are neural network. 200 frames per second system, just a 3 watt increase in the AI. Yeah, and so that's just a, another uh, AI accelerator that's actually a Social Next chipset? It's not. Social Next have partnered with what they call Gryphon. All right. Uh, partnered with the. Uh, yeah. Uh, somewhere. Yeah, okay. so the, um, it's on an M2, the actual accelerator is on an M2 format, yeah. which allows, in theory, you can drop it into other devices. Um, but that means it's, it's ready to go into small-scale embedded systems because M2 is nice and compact. Um, but, but in this case, it's, the M, it's been attached to a, an adapter card and placed in the PCI slots. And uh, uh, that's PCIe, you can usually, in yours, you, you put an NVIDIA? Yes, I run NVIDIA GT10. GT10 is quite elderly, and the reason we picked it was the least power. So uh, it is, it's actually one of the highest power consuming components in the box, is the graphics card. The GPU. Um, which, you know, it'd be nice to find, it, it, if we could find a lower powered PCIe graphics card, uh, then the numbers for the base idle at 32 would go down quite substantially. But there's just one PCIe slot, right? No, no, there's uh, three PCIe slots. Ah, there's three. Yeah. So you can have a GPU, an AI accelerator, yes. and what else? Uh, well, sound card. I, I'm an audio guy historically. I used one? to do. I used to do DSP. So plugging in a sound card is a nice thing to do. You have one uh, of those? And you can get a very high spec sound card to, to slot in PCI slots. Uh, nice. I think I'm using. No, I'm using. Um, at home, I've got HDMI running out, and then uh, audio comes out the side of my monitor. And there's all kinds of other things potentially. Uh, there's, there could be more memory, fast memory, fast networking, fast all kinds of things in PCIe. It's got gigabit Ethernet. It's got fairly performant RAM. Um, like I say, you can put quite a lot in it. Uh, 30, yeah, it goes up to 64 gigs. Um, and uh, how many other uh, Linaro engineers have been able to use it constantly for four months? Are you like the record hauler? Uh, or you have uh, some other guys too? I think I'm the only one doing arm and arm on developer box at the moment. Um, there's a couple of people in the server groups who are doing arm and arm on more expensive boxes. Like they have the big server chips maybe? Yeah. yeah. Or in some cases some harder to find boxes that they don't make anymore. Do you like to have <laughs> one of those? Uh, in my garage, but not in my study. Okay. This, uh, the other thing about these things is they're pretty much silent. They're passively cooled. Um, the graphics card is passively cooled. There's not a fan. So if you get a power supply that is passively cooled, you have no noise. And that's quite special. And uh, how about uh, uh, your, your electricity bill? Has it gone up a little bit or not? <laughs> not, not at all? Oh, my electricity certainly hasn't gone up. Uh, right. I, I can't really measure the, uh, the effect of this on my electricity bill. Uh, there are many, many people in it's my house. It's a few cents, right? I mean, it's been up over like a pound or something over the last four months. Well, it will have been using less power than what I was using before. So I, I would have saved something, but I couldn't tell you what.